In the beginning, there was a vast swirl of watery chaos. This churning water was so great, so strong, like a hurricane, that the fresh waters and the salt waters were bound up together. This watery chaos filled the whole world, powerful and terrible. But one day, the fresh water, the god Apsu, swirled out from the salt water, the goddess Tiamat. Now differentiated, the two water gods begat children, and they had many. These younger gods all lived inside their mother's vast body, churning, playing, shouting, and shrieking, as children do. They were so loud that they kept their father awake. He could not sleep. He could not work. Both parents were restless and annoyed. What were they to do? Apsu resolves to kill them. Tiamat disagrees. Apsu asks advice from Mumu, who secretly agrees to help kill the young gods. Tiamat learns of the plan and warns her oldest son, Ea, who promptly uses magic to put his father into a coma and kill him. This is not what Tiamat wanted. She grows angry. She grows strong. She wants revenge. Tiamat creates a coalition of some of the gods and also creates 11 monsters to help her. She elevates the god Kingu to be her new husband. The other gods resist her, but cannot defeat her. Then one day, the god Marduk, the son of Ea, comes forward. He is stronger than his father. He was given the wind to play with as a child. They elect him as their champion, and he goes out to challenge Tiamat. He blows her away. He destroys her. He rips her corpse in two, and from then creates the heavens and the earth. Marduk then creates the calendar, organizes the planets and stars, and regulates the moon, the sun, and weather. He is recognized as the supreme god. Those who sided with Tiamat are forced to work as slaves to the winners until one day, Marduk also kills Kingu. From the blood of his body, Marduk creates people to be the slaves of the gods. Finally, the gods could rest with people to do their work for them. Now, listen afresh to the beginning of Genesis. In the beginning, there was only one God. Yahweh was his name, and he created the heavens and the earth. And it happened something like this. The earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the water. Notice that watery chaos is kept in check because Yahweh has it under his control. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. He separated light from darkness, calling them night and day. And that was the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the water. And it was so. God separated the waters above from the waters below, and that was the second day. And God said, Let the waters below be gathered together, and let dry land appear. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathered waters the seas. God loved everything that he had made. God saw that it was good. And he didn't stop there. He was just getting started. He said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants, fruit, everything that has seeds. Let them spring up all over the earth. And God saw that it was good. All that he created on the third day. 
And God said, Let there be lights to govern the day and night and seasons. And they appeared. The sun, the moon, the stars, and all their constellations. God loved it. He saw that it was good. That was the fourth day. And God said, Let there be swarms of living creatures. And according to his word, there they were. Fish swimming in schools, birds flying in chevron formation. Even the great sea creatures were made by God for his pleasure. He saw that what he had made was good. He blessed his creatures and told them all to multiply and fill the earth. And that was the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth animals, livestock, creeping things, and beasts. And it was so. God created every type of creature according to its kind. God loved what he had made and called it good. Then God said, Now, let's make human beings in our own image, after our likeness. Not out of leftover parts, not made to be slaves. These human creatures were to have dominion over the fish and the birds and all the animals. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and told them to multiply and fill the earth, just like the animals. But to the humans, he gave a special job of ruling over everything. And he gave them plants of the earth as food. And everything happened just like he said. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. That was the sixth day. Then, on the seventh day, God rested from his work. Like a king sitting on his throne, God paused and enjoyed his handiwork, everything he had made. God had created out of love, not out of chaos or fighting. God created for the sheer pleasure of it. He didn't need created things. He didn't need slaves to do his work. God could make whatever he wanted out of nothing. He made people because he liked them. Because he loved them. He blessed that seventh day and made it special. Now, Yahweh would reign 